What's up guys? It's mid-morning, March 22nd, 10.50 right now. And we're getting ready to head out for the midday and the afternoon hunt. We just went back to camp, dropped off footage. Greg's gonna be working on this morning's hunt and yesterday's. Before we dive in here, there's a couple things Hayden wanted me to talk about real quick. We have two giveaways going on right now. One of them is the Vortex hunt giveaway that we've mentioned already, and it's closing down here real soon. So if any of you have not entered for that and want to, please go to the description below to learn more about the Vortex hunt giveaway. We're, we're giving away a turkey hunt to a viewer for spring of 2024, and you gotta go over to Vortex's page to sign up for the giveaway, but we got that information down below in the description. The other thing we're gonna give away is one of these M2 turkey vests that we've been wearing this year. Um, the giveaway sign up is over on our website and Hayden's gonna have a link for me to post down in the description below. So if you wanna sign up to win one of these vests, just go over there. Speaking of the M2 vest, I don't know that I've talked about it in an actual YouTube video yet. We just made a short about it, but this is the turkey vest that we've been working on for the last couple years. If you guys saw us wearing a different turkey vest last spring, that was the prototypes for this thing. It's taken us several years to get it fine-tuned and the tethered guys have been really helpful and instrumental in the whole design process for creating this thing. We basically set out to create what we felt like was the perfect turkey vest. And it's made in the USA and it is very expensive. It's a $300 turkey vest, guys. This thing is not for everybody. And we're not saying that you need to have this thing to kill turkeys. You can wear a fanny pack out there and kill turkeys. You don't need to have this. But what I'm saying is we've all worn lots of different vests over the years. They've worked fine, but we never really felt like we had something that was super comfortable that we could use for all times of the year, that we could use not only for turkey hunting, but also for scouting, for shed hunting, for deer hunting. That's why we created this vest. It's the M2 stands for mobile mod. Modular. The modular aspect means that you can interchange the pockets on it. You can sort of build it out custom so that it works for you. I mean, it's got a bird bag in the back of mine, but you can put a hydration pack on there. You can also run a hydration bladder in the bird bag that I'm wearing. So there's lots of different configurations that you can do with this thing. If you want to learn more about it, we'll have links in the description below where we get into all the details on it. And the main thing I want to mention is the majority of our profits that we get from this are going back into turkey conservation. They're either going to turkey research or turkey habitat. Right now, as it stands, if you buy it, you get a mossy oak turkey stamp for 15 bucks, and then an additional $15 is going to habitat. And we're not trying to make a bunch of money off of it. We're just gonna give it back to turkeys, whatever profits we make. So hopefully you guys like the vest. We all love it so far, and we're gonna go put it to work here in a minute. Just cruising around looking for a spot to go in and we're walking down the edge of that road back there and found some turkey tracks. Looked to be pretty fresh, like since the last rain. I couldn't tell if it was gobbler tracks or not, though. It looked pretty big, yeah, I thought. It looked like it to me. Yeah. Middle toe is pretty long. Mm -hmm. Long middle toe. Mm -hmm. Long middle toe, mm -hmm. that's what you're looking for out there. That's right. It's already getting pretty hot. It's supposed to be 86 tomorrow, 81 today. So big, big difference in temperature versus what we've been dealing with last week. We're just gonna bail off in these woods below where we found them tracks and do some calling and searching around for more signs, see what we come up with here. <laughs> it looks like he's got a couple of food plots right there. Mm -hmm. He'd hear us from here though, I would think. Yeah but I'm not sure if we go up and around this ridge and then dive into that bottom, we're gonna be straight across from those. Yeah, you wanna go up over here and then mm -hmm. yep. like that? Yep, basically just hook around the base mm -hmm. of that ridge. Right on. Get down in here amongst them more. I kinda got that feeling. I also haven't pooped today, so it could be it. <laughs> Plenty of nice logs around. Just take your pick. Give this a sniff test. Sniff. Two day old. Turkey scratch in two days. Yeah. 48 hours. So should we back out then? No, we should press on. <laughs> They're clearly running away from us. We gotta catch up. They're two days ahead of us. <laughs> They're two full days ahead. <laughs> Oh, 
you're gonna kill these seven turkeys. You gotta think, be next level. You gotta think outside the box like that. Yeah, you gotta get next level in here. You kill these turkeys down here, you can kill them on Mars. <laughs> and that's the truth. Sure. We've been dealing with a lot of thick woods and tough places to hear turkeys. So, which sometimes is a good thing on public land. When you get in this real open stuff where that sound travels a ways, everybody can hear them. But we're way back in here right now. Pretty remote spot. It's got a bunch of little folds in the terrain like this, but it looks really open. Like right over this little rise, there's another uh, drainage, like a little intermittent creek. And then I can see that ridge going back up on the other side. It's like wide open down through there. You can see like 200 yards. This would be a great spot to strike one because then we could pull him through that creek and up on top of this little knob and range. But they have other plans. Somebody's been here hunting. Oh, it looks that way. It's like a fresh boot track. Mm hmm. Yeah. But I don't know where they would have, they could have come in from the same way we did. Come There's also. Private, a, maybe. Yeah, they could have come off private. I'm not sure. We're way in here. Just walking this creek and just found a old set of gobbler tracks back there i say old it was in the sand i mean it could have been who knows a few days old but it's definitely a gobbler track it's a great big turkey track there's a boot track right here though where somebody's been in here ahead of us don't mean there still ain't one in here He's cutting. Yelping. We just sat down to take a little break from the heat. Oh crap. Moving in. Yeah, she's coming. Did some calling up this ridge and as we sat down right here, I called one time, just plain yelp at one time on that glass call. And she went to cutting and yelping. Sounds like she's coming. I don't think a gobbler's with her though, if she's coming that quick. Maybe two jigs. Two jigs and two hands.
They're straight off my right shoulder. About 12 yards. One's walking right at us. About 10 yards now. Uh, they're about to step, come around on your left side. We just had four beautiful wild turkeys come right past us. They about stepped on top of Nick. Look like two Jennies and two Jakes, I think. One of them might have been an adult hen, but I don't know how to tell. I mean, you can look at their wings sometimes and be able to tell if they're Jennies or hens, but either way, those were the turkeys that were cutting and yelping at us in that bottom. They eventually came up here. Ted filmed them scratching down below here for a long time. And I'm sure you could probably hear it in the audio. That is one thing to note. Even on a windy day like today, we could hear those turkeys scratching from 150 yards away in these woods. Always be listening for that. The one thing that's absent is drumming and gobbling from an adult gobbler. We have not heard either of those or seen a gobbler down in that bottom. Or long beard, I should say. Yeah, we have seen a long beard's tracks down there. There's got to be one in here somewhere. It's hot and dry though, and I don't know if we got enough water to sit in this creek bottom the rest of the day or not. So, I don't know what we'll do. We'll probably call again here in a minute and see if we can get a gobbler to crack off down in there. But with all of that commotion going on, with us going back and forth with them hens, you would have thought that if there was a gobbler anywhere up and down that creek bottom, that he would have hammered and been right there. Yeah. But nothing doing could also just be with a group of hens deeper in the creek bottom we're definitely in a good spot though and we haven't boogered too much up so we might just lay with them in here you see them yeah what was it quail that's what i thought whole cubby of them right cubby there 12 15 quail right here ain't seen many of them down here mm-hmm -mm. It's right out here on this flat. Yep. Man, it's a good spot to kill one right here. Keep running into more and more turkey side. A lot of scratching in here. Some of it's pretty fresh too. Can't buy a gobble though. There's got to be one in here though. It sure seems that way. There's, we found a handful of fresh gobbler tracks up and down there. Probably just a long beard in here with some hens that ain't talking. Or we just haven't caught up to him yet. We're just slowly, we've been slowly coming through these woods for three three hours. Because we keep running into sign. I don't like just gomming around through an area with a bunch of turkeys in it. So we're just picking our way along real careful. Just haven't hit him yet. Seems like he might be floating on to some of this private around yeah, here. Yeah, there's a, coming back there's a good point. bit of private on around this place that's clear cut. He could easily be out there right now, and then he drifts back into this bottom tonight to roost. Yeah. against the edge of these short pines. Well, that is gonna be a, an early morning there, boys. It's taking that sound a little while to get there. Mm -hmm. He probably is down there on the creek. Night, night, turkey. See you in the morning. Right there. March 23rd. It's uh, 5.09, Nick tells me. We got a long walk in here to get after this bird we roosted last night. We actually hunted through this same area yesterday, called up two jakes and two hens, found a pile of turkey sign, including some big gobbler tracks and other hunter sign in there. There was other boot tracks, but did not hear a turkey gobble in there yesterday. But with the amount of scratching that we found through there, and then obviously the gobbler tracks, we figured there was one in there. And sure enough, last night, 
he was in there gobbling in that creek so we got over a mile walk to get to him where he's at that's why we're gonna start early mm-hmm yep <laughs> <laughs> Let's go for it, I guess, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm tired. To the moon. <laughs> it just don't get no better. 6.30 right now. We are in position. We stopped short of the bottom that he's roosted in. There's a little ridge that plays out right here, and we found a pile of fresh scratching on it yesterday, so kind of hesitant to move forward and get in that wide open bottom with him when we're back up here on this ridge we got a little bit of topography to work with so we can move on him if he goes one way or the other we all three have different pins on him from last night i mean ranging from 150 yards from right here to 350 400 yards across the creek we'll just wait till he gobbles here i might owl screech in just a minute when the birds start chirping see if we can get an early gobble out of him then move accordingly Sounds good to me. Got some scratching right over there that we found yesterday. Yeah. Found scratching right here behind us. All right, I'm going to screech. <coughs> he ain't up yet. He still got his head under his wing. I might get the house fired up, though. He's still tucked in tight. <coughs>
Let's go. Plan A, boys. Plan B. Hey. Hey, smash. Yes. Yes. Smash. Let's go! <laughs> Golly. I had to make sure it was the long beard when yeah, he came yeah, over. I, but I wasn't sure either at first. When he oh got it right there, right on the other side of that hill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. We just, we came in here an hour and a half before daylight. It took forever to walk back in here. And I thought, when we pinned that sucker last night in the train, <laughs> I thought he was 400 yards from here. Yeah. Didn't think he was right And you there. guys were like, your, your all's pin was like 150, 200 from here. Yeah. We just posted up at this pine tree. This is, this is a great tip and something that I just thought about. When we were hunting with Mike Pentecost a few years ago, he would always, like when he was going to listen for turkeys, he would always stop at a big tree and he would lean against a big tree instead of like standing out here in the open. Yep. And I was like, why do you do that? And he's like, just in case one hammers off right above you, uh -huh. you can just melt into the tree. Yep. And that made a lot of sense. And that's why we come up to this big tree this morning. Yep. And I'm glad we did because he gobbled like <laughs> 60 yards. <laughs> right. uh -huh. we, we couldn't see him in the tree. Man, <sighs> my heart jumped out. <laughs> I don't know where it comes. I don't know. I freaked out when he gobbled right there on the limb. I was sitting down on the ground. I remember he gobbled. I looked up at Dan. I was like, oh my God. Oh my gosh, he's right. And the sucker was right there. Remember when we we're sitting here and we're like, I think I'm out here drumming. And you're like, oh really? I think I might just heard drumming once. <laughs> I'm like, well, if it is drumming, it ain't close. It's down in there. Sometimes you can hear it from a couple hundred yards. Yeah. I can't believe he's right there. He never gobbled when you screamed. I too close either. to him. Probably too close. Yeah. What was the other one that popped up with him? Is that a Jake? Yeah. Like, I had to make sure it was him when he came over. That's why I yeah. called there and then he gobbled him like, that's you, old boy. Uh, <laughs> it's really about perfect because we got this little lip right here. So he probably had to come. Yeah. So he had he to could look over the top of that. Yeah. He had to come see. around that little mound right there for sure. What a rodeo that was. I was just so scared that he was going to see us in our move we had to make to get behind this tree. But I was too. We had enough. Had enough of this green cover. <laughs> yeah, boys. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He ain't 20 yards. <laughs> he's right there. <laughs> Hell, he's just right here. <laughs> oh, man. You can't beat that, oh, boys. You beauty. can't beat that. Look at that sucker. Beautiful. <laughs> Turkey. Yeah, that's a pretty one there. It's a big one. Yeah, pretty one. Big tail fan, looks yep. like. They were roosted. Yep. Just right off that little lip right there. Yep. Right up. I mean, he might have been in that big oak right there, honestly. I don't know how we got away with that. Because I was sitting over there screwing with my gun in the dark and everything, making noise. I'm like, oh, we're 300 yards from him. Uh -huh. No big deal. And then pow, I was like, oh my God. Yep. About soiled my drawers there when we got them. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Where's our tree at? Look at what he saw. Oh yeah, we were ahead really good. I had to shoot through I had to shoot through some of that brush, but man, that fires me up. That sucker had a head. He did, yeah, especially he did. when he was standing right here that last uh, time. Yeah, he drove I mean, right at us. And last yeah. night when we roosted him, you could hear him from so far. Just yeah, that's like, what we, me and Nick were talking about last night. It's just like, seemed like a longer gobble than most of the ones we yeah, heard. So he's roosted right there. Let's measure this from where we were listening. We thought he was like 600 yards from us, and he ended up being a lot, far, a lot further than that. 900 yards. 900 yards. Wow. That's how far he was. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Get off me. <laughs> get off me. Feel good after our little. Ooh. After the Alavant yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we we hunted all through these woods yesterday. Yeah. We knew these woods then coming into this morning. Yeah. This morning we knew there was a bunch of scratching in here. What about? 40 yards from where we shot him. I'm pretty sure that they were roosted in that big pine tree right there. Maybe in this oak, but that pine tree 
there's two or three of them right there that got a bunch of really good horizontal limbs. And they can pitch right off the point of this ridge and just hop up there, be nice and easy. And they pitch from that pine tree to that little finger ridge right there. You can't even see that on a topo map, it's so small. He flew right to that, and then that's really when we started pouring the call into him. And then he went all the way up. Right up over there. He, I think he was right there with them jakes, and then he basically just came straight up yeah. and over. That makes sense. Man, we got lucky. Greg, just kick back, enjoying it. You seen any turkeys around here? <laughs> you did? Well, there you go. I'll just be. No kidding. I'll just be darn. It's interesting how it happened, really. A little beard on him. Oh, yeah? Yeah. About ran him over. We thought he was maybe 200 yards further down from us. Warp thought he could have been four to 500 yards further down. And then he gobbled, and he's like 60 yards right there. Holy cow. He That's gobbled sweet. at 20 yards right before Did he really? Him. Oh. Well, you're out, Chef. Oh, you're talking to me? It ain't Ted. Uh -oh. I ain't you, Chef. Warp killed that turkey this morning. Smashed, actually. Smashed that turkey this morning. We're about to eat one of his breasts right now. And some of these done-up potatoes. I'm gonna put a little barbecue sauce on it. You know, nothing, nothing out. out of this world. But anyway, Ted's up to bat neck. He's got the valid license and got the tag, so you're in the shooting chair. Go try a new spot tomorrow. Just got done with a live podcast not too long ago. We do those every Thursday on the podcast channel, so if you want to check that out, that'd be great. Subscribe to the channel, too. We're trying to get up there, you know, around that 10,000 mark. It's at like so, five so, right so. now. That's yeah. it. We're going to eat this turkey breast and hit the hay and then get up tomorrow and go try and find another one.